Hi there Fabric Jugglers, it's Babs here from Fiery Phoenix and today's tutorial is all around creating um, a shopping bag, a nice sturdy shopping bag for you to take around. Since the UK introduced a new um, disposable plastic bag law, um, at all stores which have over 250 employees I think, it's a very random number, um, now have to charge you 5p for a plastic bag. Uh, obviously this is a good thing. Um, the money goes to charity, uh, it saves thousands of bags, millions of bags, plastic bags going into the oceans and destroying our wildlife, uh, but it is a pain, it's a real faff. So this tutorial is really, really quick and it shows you how you can make one of these really simple bags um, out of stuff that you have lying around the house, you don't have to go out and buy anything special, and, um, and then start to, to shop with something that's a little bit more stylish and chic than just your bog standard um, a plastic bag. So hopefully you'll stick around and have a look at that and um, let's get sewing. So what we're doing today is creating the um, a, a sturdy shopping bag. Um, I'm taking the upcycling and eco theme to, to the limit and I'm actually going to be recycling an old pair of curtains into this bag. I think it's a beautiful fabric and it's actually quite sturdy. Um, the stronger the bag will be is based on the strength of the fabric you use. If you try and create something out of chenille, you'll have a very weak and feeble bag that will rip almost immediately. Um, if you use a cotton, you'll have a nice lightweight bag. It won't be the strongest in the world, but it will be a nice solid um, bag, lightweight, that you can, you can carry around. And for me, I want something slightly sturdier so that I can carry some of my heavier groceries. So I've, I've used this, this fabric um, from, from a curtain. Uh, it's, a nice, it's a nice woolen, it's nice strong, and it, it's quite a thick fabric. Um, the point being that you can use any fabric to make one of these bags. Now I've already done some prep. You don't really want to see me cutting and pressing fabric. Um, so what you need is a piece of fabric which is... 19 inches wide or 50 centimetres, 48, 50 centimetres wide by one metre long, um, which in inches is, because my maths is terrible at this, 39 inches. I'll put both measurements, metric and, um, and imperial, down in the description below. And you also need two strips which are 4 inches by 18 inches or 10 centimetres by 46, 47 centimetres, and those are going to, to make the straps. So I'll show you what pressing I did um, as prep, and I think cutting and pressing and sewing my other half um, took about five to 10 minutes in, in total. It really doesn't take long, because we're just cutting nice, simple rectangles. Um, I couldn't snip and rip on this fabric, but if you're using a lighter fabric, uh, then definitely use snip and rip to get through that a lot quicker and if you don't know what I'm talking about I'll pop a link to it somewhere in the video. Um, for the bag, the actual body of the bag, um, all you need to do to prepare it is to press a small fold and then a second slightly larger fold. This is going to be the top of the bag where the handle is attached. Um, and that's where we'll be attaching the handle. But first of all, we need to, to actually prepare the handle itself. And so for that one, I've simply taken the, uh, the, the strip and folded it once on one edge, once on the other edge, so that we could be hiding those raw edges and then folding the whole thing over to cover that itself. So once again, it's folding it one side short, the other side short, and then the whole thing encasing those raw edges um, in half. And all we need to do is using a long stitch, I'm sticking for the entirety of this project, um, I'm sticking with a, a, a stitch length of four. Uh, you simply need to run one row of stitches down one side and one row down the other. Uh, the first row that I tend to do is to secure the, um, the two edges together. And I always back stitch across every, um, every end of, of this construction. I, um, I tend to use a lot of back stitching in, or reverse stitching in this project. We 
when you come to the end, simply lift the presser foot, turn it round, and go back up the other way. You don't need to be snipping and cutting and stopping. We can just keep going. Now the backs, the uh, the two layers of top stitching actually give the handle a lot of um, strength and resilience, which is what you want to go for. We're we're looking for a um, a handle which will, will take the weight of our groceries without uh, without snapping under the pressure. And then what we do is attach the handles onto the wrong side of the fabric. So if there is a right side or a wrong side to your handle, you make sure that the right side is facing up because that will eventually be flipped back up. So that's this way around for me. And I chose the position of my handle to be 14 centimeters in from each side. It's personal preference. You can, you can choose to, to measure it out and, and decide how long you want your handle to be and exactly where you want it to be. The important thing is that wherever it is, it needs to one, be even across both sides of the bag and two you need to make sure that it is even with the other half of the bag when it folds back up so in this case I think that probably isn't even I'll just double check that oh actually no it is that works out that works out so that's fine so you just need to, to double check that everything lines up from one end of the bag to the other and also side to side. I'll just pop another pin in on this side. So I arbitrarily chose 14 centimeters. There's no right or wrong. You simply decide what you think looks nice and gives you a comfortable, comfortable handle size. And then we sew that hem closed. And we'll also be using this as a top stitch. Where we cross the um, the actual handle itself, we'll be going backwards and forwards three times just to reinforce that connection. So here we're going to go back and forth. And that will give us a nice secure handle. And then we're going to re replicate that again when we flip the handle the right way up. to the end having reinforced that strap handle. And now what we'll do is flip the handle back up and then sew across the top of the pieces here. So we will effectively top stitch all the way along the edge and then do another three back and forth and back. Um, along the top edge just to, uh, to keep those handles securely in place. Be careful when you come to feed it through so that it doesn't get caught on any lips of fabric that might be there. through to do the second one. And there we have the handles on nice and securely. 
Um, and so now we come to the, the final piece of, of this incredibly fast make, which is the French seams for the sides. Now you can pin these if you wish. Um, I'm not even remotely interested in pattern matching. I just want a quick and easy bag. Um, and we will sew down one of the edge quite closely to the edge and then we'll turn the bag inside out and so again to enclose those white edges um, so let's just get that started again I'm sticking with a large stitch length um, because this isn't a fine piece of, um, of garment where it's, uh, it's a bag it's just a shopping bag so I'm just going to sew at the, the width of my presser foot um, all the way down the edge and then do the same on the other side the reason I start at the top edge if I take away those um, threads. The reason I start at the top edge is so that that guarantees that they will line up. If I start at the bottom and for some reason the fabric goes out of alignment I, I don't want to end up with um, with, with really dodgy uh, mismatched tops of the bag. So what I'm doing is starting with this so that I know that is going to be the correct size. Now one of my edges is nice and neat and the other edge is really ribby looking. Um, it's, it's, it's got all sorts of uh, bits of fabric hanging off. So what I'm going to do is just trim up this dodgy looking edge. Try to find it on camera for you. There we go. Trim up this particular side just so that it's about a quarter of an inch away. It's going to be neater and um, it's going to be a lot easier to sew the French seam around um, rather than having these lumpy, bumpy bits of fabric. Just trim that down, being very careful not to actually cut through the, the seam that you've just sewn. And take all that rubbish away. Uh, if you want to, you can trim the other side up to match, um, just so that it is even, but this side isn't actually messy. Um, Quite sure how I managed to, to trim one so neatly and, and one so particularly badly. And then going against everything I always say, holding this up so you can see me trim it, you should never cut it holding it up in the air because that's when you cut bits of finger off. Um, so now that I've trimmed that, I can turn the bag wrong side out and go back over and complete the French seam, which will enclose, enclose the, uh, those nasty raw edges. And which will also give extra strength to the bag. You can press this if you want to, but I'm, um, I'm not too fussed about that at this point. I'm just gonna go back down. quite hefty fabric so um, trimming it up is a good plan but just be aware when you're sewing how bulky or otherwise your fabric is One side done. Now on to the final, final side. Final, final? No, the last side. 
would be simpler if you had pressed it, but I'm uh, trying to show you how speedily this bag can be created if you're really not going for high couture tailoring on your bag. So I tend to go slowly over the top where there are lots and lots of layers and then speed on through the rest. So long as that edge is lying flat and neat, you'll be fine. Trim up those loose edges, or loose threads rather. And you have a perfectly workable shopping bag. with all of its raw edges enclosed. Um, that also means that if you spill anything in your bag, if your eggs break, if your uh, milk spills, you can just pop the bag straight in the laundry, wash it, clean it, and then have it good to go as soon as it's dried. And that is one shopping bag, one sturdy, simple shopping bag. Um, if you want to do something clever with the bottom, um, I've got another video coming up uh, later this week which will show you how to box the corners of the bag so that you end up with a bag that is much wider uh, this is just as I said a very simple simple standard one um, obviously it will take a lot of shopping um, as is but if you wanted to have a slightly squared off effect on the bottom of the bag then check out Thursday's tutorial um, in that one I will show you how you can then create this with a boxed bottom so um, hopefully the two tutorials will work together for you and you'll be able to stop worrying about all those extra 5Ps here, there and everywhere and just have some really quite stylish um, shopping totes that you can, you can take with you that are ready to go. Well, I hope the video has been useful to you. I hope it's been helpful. My hair looks really bizarre. Um, I had it cut and I'm still not quite sure what I'm doing with it. Um, but uh, what was I saying? Yes, so hopefully this has been useful to you. If it has, please give it a thumbs up, share it around. Um, especially at the moment with the, the whole shopping bag situation in the UK. And uh, if you like the tutorials on this ch this channel, you can always consider subscribing. Um, I upload videos every Tuesday and Thursday, and um, I'm always looking for challenges, collaborations, requests. So if you've got any of those, drop them in the comments below, and I'll add you to my recording schedule. If you come up with a new suggestion, um, then you'll get a shout out in the video. Um, I always like to acknowledge people that have, have suggested the, the topics for um, for the tutorials um, <clears throat> and um, I hope you're going to have a lovely day. It's a bit murky and grim here at the moment but hopefully the day itself will get pick up. So um, I'll speak to you soon. Bye.